Oh, great. Are we live? I don't see us as live yet, but I think we are probably live. We are live. Hello, everyone. We are excited to have you to today's experiment along. I'm Dr. Shannon from the Abrams Planetarium. Would you like to introduce yourself? Oh, I'm Kristen. All uh, right. <laughs> Kristen is a graduate student in the physics and astronomy department, though she is about to defend and become Dr. Kristen. So that's very exciting. Um, so uh, we are doing today a uh, solar system scavenger hunt. And so what we are going to be doing um, is we're going to talk about the scale of the solar system. So we are going to imagine if we could take the entire solar system and shrink it down um, all to one size, what's going to, what size would everything be? So we've got some folks asking how they get into this. So let me go help them out real quick and then we can go ahead and get ready. But what we're gonna be doing is looking for items that match that size in our house. So I'm going to do that real quick. And all right. Do you want to share your screen and we're going to go take a look at the solar system real quick, Kristen, we'll go ahead and get started there. Okay, so I have it open to the sun, but I'm going to go to the solar system overview. And this is a really great website. It's called solarsystem.nasa.gov and it's their solar system exploration. Um, And um, this is completely free and online. So it's a really nice way to go check out the planets and see where they are right now. All right. All righty. All right. So I think we've got lots of folks joining us now. Hello. If you can say hi in the comments and let us know that you are here. If you have any questions, hi Savannah, um, let us know in there as well. We're going to try to keep an, an eye on all of that. Um, so, uh, and then we can go ahead and get started. So like I said, today we're going to be doing a model of the solar system. And um, models are really helpful within science because they help us think about things that are really big or really small or that are really hard for us to see. They help us figure out different ways of thinking about what is going on. And so that's why um, we really like models. And so one way to help us think about the size of things and the size of the solar system is to go and um, make a scale model. So if we were to imagine that we take the sun in the center of our solar system, this really, really big star, it's huge. And we imagine that we bring it down to about one meter. So that's about three feet or so, or one yard. So if you think about a yardstick. I also have right here, my board. I drew roughly the size of the sun right here. Um, or Kristen, if she wants to stop sharing her screen real quick, I'll go ahead and share. She has something else that works. Maybe you guys have this at home. My sun is a little bit smaller than one meter, but it's close enough. And there's another problem with it, with it which is that it's blue. So there are blue stars, but the sun is not one of them. The sun is yellow. So, so imagine that it's a yellow star. Imagine that it's blue and slightly larger, or not blue and slightly larger. <laughs> yeah. So Kristen, do you want to talk about the sun? Yeah. So we're going to use the sun. We're going to use roughly this size sun, and then we're going to talk about all the planets and see if we can find things in our house that would be the right size for each planet. But we're going to start by talking about the sun. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so we can see the sun. Oh, the picture of the sun on that website is really cool. Yeah. Because the sun not only gives off visible light, so like the yellow color that we see, but it actually can give off x-rays and it actually has a very active surface. So it's exciting. There we go. Okay. See the sun. Oh, I went to a satellite <laughs> instead. That's cool too. This is stereo, it looks at the sun. Oh no. 
for lost in space. Fun. All right, go ahead and talk about this then while I go find this one. Um, so one of the things that's interesting, so there we go. Oh, this is so cool. Look at that surface. Like you can see that it is a really dynamic place and not at all boring. And it's very, very hot. Um, the temperature is about 6,000 Kelvin. So it's so hot that we had to switch to a different unit of measurement so that we wouldn't, you know, um, have a lot of zeros. But one of the things I think is really interesting about it is so it's actually made out of plasma. And so that means it's like this very, imagine maple syrup. So something viscous, it's like a viscous fluid. Um, viscous just means that it, the texture of maple syrup about and so it's boiling and bubbling and there are spots where it'll just um shoot out plasma like ropes and it has to do with magnetic fields it's really cool but if you um those are called coronal mass ejections when it shoots out the plasma and if you are on a sunny day so not a day like today and you're looking with the solar telescope you can actually see little um loops plasma loops coming out of the side of it and those um in the process of shooting out plasma, that's also what creates the aurora on our own atmosphere. So it ejects um, charged particles that make it all the way over here and they interact with their own magnetic field. Um, so the sun is really dynamic and awesome place, but I wouldn't recommend visiting it because that would be kind of warm. <laughs> all right, so shall we head out to Mercury? That's our next, that's our first planet. That's our next step. That's next up. So let's go back from the solar system. Let's go find Mercury. Mercury is the closest planet to the sun. And we're going to talk about the distances in this in a little bit. Let me zoom in just a tad. Uh, there's Mercury. Let's go there. Now, Mercury is the smallest planet. And the closest one. And look at that. That's Mercury. Mercury looks a lot like the moon. It has a lot of these craters on it, just like the moon does. And it doesn't really have much of an atmosphere. Um, we call it an exosphere. So it has some uh, gases that surround it, like an atmosphere, like the Earth. But that's all because it's so close to the sun. The sun's sort of blasting it and sending a lot of those gases hanging out around Mercury. Otherwise, Mercury is, it's too close, it's too hot, it's not very big. So remember, if this is roughly the size of our sun right here, which is hard to see, let me see. If this is our sun, we can't even fit the whole thing on my board here. How big do you think Mercury is going to be? Put it in the comments. How, many, how big do you think Mercury would be? But do you think it'd be like the size of an orange or the size of a grape or the size of a baseball? What do you think? Go ahead and put that in the comments. I'm gonna see what you guys see there. And then I'll, I'll then we'll do a drum roll. I'll imagine you're all doing a drum roll. Any ideas? We need a Ohio peeps. It says, hello, from, hello folks from Ohio. Oh, we've got some folks here from the La Leche Lee of Warren. Oh, someone says a pepper flake. Oh yeah. Oh, a grape. Any other ideas? Ooh, the size of a pea. It's a good one. I like the food analogy. That's good. Ooh, a ping pong ball, an eraser head, a grain of sand. Ooh, as big as a tennis ball. A grape again. Now I want grapes. Yeah, me too. It is very, very hot. So yeah, that's a good point. Oh, uh, as wide as her arms and she's four. That's from Salon. I hope I said that right. If I did not, I'm very, very sorry. A grape core or an apple. Oh, the size of my head. A marble. So yeah, Mercury is really hot, but it's actually not the hottest planet. Oh, the size of a dime. Okay. So Mercury, by the way, since it doesn't really have an atmosphere, it has no, atmospheres act like blankets for planets. So the day side of Mercury, is about 800 degrees all the time, but the day side can't, or the night side can't hold on to the temperature. So it gets down to negative 300 degrees. So it goes from really hot to really cold. And Mercury is also kind of weird uh, because it's um, day lasts about 59 Earth days. 
because it rotates really slowly. And it takes um, 88 days to go around the sun once. So a full day to night cycle is actually longer than a Mercury year. So Mercury is weird. Oh, we've got some more things. A pebble, a sphere, an orby. I'm not sure what an orby is, but that sounds like fun. A pinhead and a baseball. Okay. All right. Who said pinhead? We see Lauren said pinhead. So here we go, right here. So the Mercury would be about the size of this pin right here, this little ball on the end of my pin, not, not the tip of the pin, there we go, but the ball on the right here. So this right here would be Mercury next if to- you stop screen sharing, I think we'll be able to see it okay, better. Let's stop so. screen sharing right now. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna bring my laptop here. <laughs> See how big, that's how big Mercury is compared to the sun. It's not very big at all. So that's Mercury. So do you have anything around your house that would be roughly the right size for Mercury? If you go find it, you can go put a picture of it or we can kind of wait till the end. And you can go find all these things and post your pictures of your whole solar system at the end. Um, yeah, there we go. There's Mercury, that little pin right there. All right. So does anyone have anything that's different at their house that would be roughly the same size? All right. All right. Shall we move on to Venus? Let's move on to Venus. Do you want me to share the picture of it? Yeah. Why don't we, we can go ahead and show our own planet. Sounds good. All right. So here's the picture of Venus. And Venus is actually the hottest planet in the solar system, which I think is pretty cool. And it does, it's covered in sulfuric acid clouds. So a lot of people have tried to send space probes to it, but they've been unsuccessful because they get destroyed. Um, one of the things I find interesting about it is that it has no magnetic field. So on Earth, like we do have a magnetic field um, that's concentrated at the poles. So that's how your compass works. Um, and that's also birds can use that to navigate. And then that's also what's like behind the cause of the Aurora. So Merc Venus is a little bit bigger than Mercury. So if you have any guesses, let's see, I'm gonna stop sharing the picture for a second. Yeah, you know, let's see if anybody has any guesses um, for the size of Mercury. Or ah, why do I keep seeing Mercury? Venus. What size do you think Venus is gonna be? I have learned that an orby is about, a dry orby is about the same size as a pin. So now I know what, are orbies those things that like you put in water and then like they expand and then they're like really squishy? I think so. Okay. I just, I did learn about those recently. Nice. Oh, someone needs ice cream. <laughs> I, I think everyone always needs ice cream. All right, so someone said slightly bigger than a pinhead. Okay. Right? Any other ideas? A googly eye. Ooh, I like googly eyes. I have a plant that I put googly eyes on every year. Oh, that's a good idea. A pebble. All right. A marble. All right, shall we, shall we do a drum roll? Yeah. Oh, the end of a bobby pin, the end of a bobby pin, that's a good one. Yeah. A pea, we've got a pea again. Ooh, uh, some sprinkles. I like sprinkles, they would go well with our ice cream. Ooh, ooh, so Venus is as big as the end of an apple juice straw from Lane, who is five. Ooh, a cough drop, an apple, the eraser on the tip of a pencil, uh, okay, thank you, Heather, for explaining what Norby is to me. I appreciate <laughs> that. I should get those for my kids. A bouncy ball? Oh, but what size bouncy ball? Because they come in different sizes. That's true, and so do googly eyes. I bet we could make an entire solar system scale model with just googly eyes. That would be awesome. Um, oh, Lauren asked, how do we send a picture? You should just be able to post it right in the comments. Go ahead and put the um, picture in the comments. All right, shall we do a drum roll? Yeah. All right. It's a ball bearing. So 
Um, remember that my sun is slightly too small, but here's Venus in comparison. So it's bigger than Mercury, which, so it's got that going for it. All right. There's Mercury. I mean, Venus. We can't Venus. keep our planet straight today. <laughs> what, day, what planet are we on? All right. I, would, I wonder, would you rather live on Venus or Mercury? Oh. Tough choice, huh? I mean, you at least get changes in temperature on Mercury. Yeah, you're not too keen. There's no acid rain. Where would you rather live, Venus or Mercury? I think the correct answer is Earth. <laughs> All right, speaking of Earth, let's go visit Earth now. So we're going to go fly to Earth. Earth is a very lovely planet. We should all be very familiar with it because it is the planet we live on. So it is our lovely mother Earth. It takes care of us. And we are gonna go get a little bit closer. There's Earth right here, our next planet out. It's the only planet that we know of that has life on it in the solar system, though there are some moons that we're looking for. Um, Someone said Titan. Titan would be a cool place to live. All right, so here's our lovely Earth right here. Uh, so let's go see if we can look at Michigan a little bit. It's covered in clouds, which is accurate. We are very cloudy right now. Uh, but there's there's Michigan hiding in the clouds. Um, but it is the only place that we know of that has um, life. And we have these four rocky inner planets. So Mercury, Venus, Earth, and then our next planet, which is Mars, are the rocky inner planets. And Earth is the largest, but it's not very much bigger than Venus. So Venus and Earth are sometimes considered twins because they're the same size, but that's like the only thing that's the same about them because we know Earth is a much nicer place to live. And Kristen, can you mute? I think we're getting some feedback. All right, I don't know where that's coming from. Um, okay, anyway, um, so Earth and Venus are about the same size. So let's just go ahead and see what I have here that represents Earth. So I found the end of this paintbrush right here. So you can see it's about the same size as what we had before. So there you go. Let's stop there. So we can see that. So the end of this paintbrush is about the, the size of Earth compared to the sun. Now let's think about the moon though, because the moon is our friend. We love the moon. So how big would the moon be? The moon's just a little bit smaller than Mercury. So here's Mercury again. So I have another pin that's just a little bit smaller same color here. Maybe here, I'll grab a green one. The joys of sewing. You have lots of solar system objects. So here's about the size of the moon compared to the earth. So the moon is actually, it's about a quarter. This is probably just a little bit smaller than it should be. But the moon's actually quite a bit smaller and it's quite a bit farther away. We can actually fit all the other planets in between the earth and the moon. So there's the earth and the moon. Ooh, someone said popcorn kernels. That would be a good one too. I think I have some popcorn kernels. All right. So what's our next planet? Mars. Okay. Mars. Here, Mars. All right. Can you see Mars? Yes, now we can see Mars. Okay, so Mars is red because it has a lot of iron oxide on the surface. So I thought that was pretty interesting. But I want people to guess. Do you think Mars is bigger or smaller than Earth? And what would you use for your scale, Mars? We have tip of a pen. Ring, 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 ring. We have that it would be smaller, smaller. Oh, someone said pepper flake again. We have a boat for, we have some boats for bigger. Okay. So some boats for smaller and some boats for bigger. 
Um, so one of the things that's really unique about Mars is actually its surface. So it has the largest volcano, it has the highest mountain, but it also has the largest canyon. And I looked up the size, um, I believe it's Phallus Marineris actually is the largest canyon. Mm -hmm. And I looked at the length of that compared to the Grand Canyon. This is 10 times longer than the Grand Canyon on Mars. It yeah. also has these polar ice caps, which I think are really cool. And just a really interesting surface. Yeah, Ballas Marineris is about as wide as the United States is almost. And Olympus Mons, like at the state of Michigan could fit inside of it, which is the largest volcano. And we're gonna be talking about volcanoes in a couple weeks, right? Yeah, so next week we're taking next Monday off because it is Memorial Day. Um, but the next week after that on June 1st, we're gonna be doing an experiment along. We're gonna be doing volcano experiments. And we're going to talk about volcanoes on other planets and exoplanets. And I think we're going to have a special guest, uh, Professor Seth Jacobson from um, Earth and Environmental Sciences. He's a geologist there. All right, so here's our guesses. We have a baseball for Mars, an eraser head, a button, um, elbow macaroni, a cheese it a sunflower seed. Those are all great ideas. Those are, um, so it turns out Mars is actually about half the size as Venus. I cheated a little bit. Can you see my Mars? I just crumpled yeah. up some tin foil to the right size. That's the thing. You can go crumple up a lot of tin foil and get the right size. So here's my Mars and my Venus next to each other, and Venus is bigger. All right. Should we put those next to the sun now? Yeah, yeah. Good idea. Well, a small bracelet. Let's see. Okay. Can you see them next to the sun? Or should I hold them? Yeah, no, I think that's good right there. Okay. There's Mars and Venus next to our big, not really blue sun. <laughs> okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to do, I know we were talking mostly about planets, but I want to talk about the asteroid belt really quickly. Yeah. So the asteroid belt is located in between Mars and Jupiter, and it's um, like all of these asteroids and like big clumps of broken up rock. So this is not to scale, but I have some glitter that I found to represent it. So one of the things I thought was interesting about it is that there are some people that have this hypothesis that the asteroid belt was another planet that got busted up by Jupiter because Jupiter is so massive. So I'm gonna put some asteroids. In the solar system. There we go. So I just always thought that was really interesting. So there we go. There's our asteroid belt <laughs> spread out. <laughs> I'm going to have fun cleaning that up later. Yeah, we tend to think about the asteroid belt as something that's really, really crowded. Uh, but our asteroids comparatively are actually really, really small, like probably smaller than anything we can find in our house. And the average distance between any asteroid is hundreds of thousands of miles. So it's actually really easy to get through the asteroid belt because um, we do send spacecraft through it all the time. So it's, it's, there are a lot of asteroids, but space is made out of space mostly. And so it's actually pretty easy to get through there. Oh, and then, oh, Selena says, Langston says, uh, Ceres is a dwarf planet. Yeah, correct. Ceres is the largest asteroid in the asteroid belt, and it's actually large enough to make itself round it's by its own gravity. So we consider that a dwarf planet in our main asteroid belt. So, uh, and here we go. Awesome. All right, what's our next planet? Jupiter, which I also have a nice Jupiter. So I'm yes, going to show you. Have Jupiter. Uh, so Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system. It is the first gas planet that we're going to get to because the other ones were all terrestrial planets or rocky planets. So it's actually made out of mostly hydrogen and it has no solid surface. Um, something I find really interesting about it, I think it actually is in this picture, it has aurorae at its poles, but they're in x-rays. So our aurorae are mostly like green, um, but yeah, if you look at an x-ray, you can see aurorae going on in its caps. And it has the great red spot over here is the longest lasting storm in the solar system. And it was first observed in the 1600s. So when they like invented the first telescope to look at it, they saw the spot. And so and that means that there's been a storm going on for 400 years, which is kind of crazy to me. 
So does anyone have any good guesses for what a nice scale Jupiter would be? Remember, this is the largest planet in the solar system. How big is Jupiter going to be? Oh, someone says it has about seven moons. How many moons did Jupiter have, Kristen? About seven. <laughs> um, the other kind of funny thing, so almost all of the planets are named after Roman mythology. And the Jupiter is named after um, Jove, one of the Roman gods. And so all of the moons are named after characters that he interacted with in Greek mythology. So like Io and Callisto and Ganymede and so on. Miranda, yeah. And I think Jupiter is up to what, about 72 moons now that we have? Oh, yeah. But I think the most of them are not observable with the telescope. There's like the main yeah. four that you can observe with the telescope. Right? There, there are four that you can see easily with the telescope, and those are called the Galilean moons named after Galileo, who first observed them. And they are Io, Callisto, Ganymede, and Europa. All right, we've got some guesses. So we've got a trumpet head, a tennis ball, a baseball, a volleyball, an orange, a small coaster, a globe, a golf ball, an apple, a softball, and an orange. Ooh, and a grape. <laughs> a grape again. That's good. a great. <laughs> That's a great answer. <laughs> um, ah. So some of those were actually pretty spot on. Um, I have a pomegranate for my Jupiter, but that's just what I found lying around that I measured. So this is my Jupiter, and I liked it because it was red, like the great red spot. Oh, look, you have a sticker on the pomegranate. Maybe that's the great red spot. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and it's from Chile, so that's exciting. All right, so there's my Jupiter. So this is the largest object in the solar system besides the sun, and here's how it scales up to the sun. When we think about all of the mass, all of the stuff in our solar system, about 99% of the stuff is in the sun. About the other 1% or so is in Jupiter and almost everything else is like mass wise doesn't quite matter. It matters to us because it's there and we love it. But when it comes to the mass, like it's so small, it, it almost doesn't matter compared to the mass in the sun and Jupiter. All right, so our next one, are you guys ready? What is the next planet? What comes after Jupiter? How many Jupiters can fit inside the sun? Oh, I'm not sure. I can tell you how many Earths can fit. It's about a million Earths can fit inside the sun. So I would have to do the math to figure out Jupiter. I can tell you that Jupiter's storm is about two Earths wide. It used to be closer to four, but it's actually shrinking now. Um, matter does all right let's go out to our next planet which is saturn so saturn is known for its rings so jupiter has rings as well but they're just a lot harder to see but saturn has rings um galileo when he first took a telescope to look at saturn his telescope wasn't super great um, it was a little bit um, fuzzy, and so he couldn't actually see the rings very clearly. So it looked like it was just a planet, but with two fuzzy blobs on each side. So he called it a planet with ears, which I always think is really funny. Um, but the Cassini came along a little bit while later, and he was able to look at the rings a lot more clearly with a better telescope. And he saw this gap in here, which we call the Cassini gap. And when people were first studying the rings, they weren't sure what it was made out of and they thought they might be solid. But someone did some math and figured out that they'd be hula hooping around the planet if they were solid. So now we know that they're not, um, that they're made out of tiny little bits of rock and ice, kind of like a bunch of tiny little moons that go around Saturn. Um, so I have a couple of questions for you, Shannon. Yeah. So one is, can you talk a little bit about shepherd moons? Because aren't those? Yeah. Yeah. So and then, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. What's your other question? Oh, um, I was going to ask, does Saturn's rings tilt over time? So that means that if you look at it at different times, you'll be able to see the gap or not? Uh, yeah. So the first one about shepherd moons. So Saturn is our current reigning champion of known moons at about 82. And uh, some of those moons are called shepherd moons. So they're actually moons that live inside the rings here and they keep these gaps stable. 
So the reason why we have these gaps is because there's little moons in here that are kind of keeping them nice and clean um, in there. So you can see that there's another gap over here and we've gotten much better pictures of Saturn's rings. Um, and the rings, um, the orientation, the rings themselves don't really tilt, but the orientation of Saturn compared to us can, does change over time. So every once in a while, Saturn will actually tilt just right and the rings are so thin that it will look like the rings disappear which is really cool um, and interesting. Um, and so let me see, because if we kind of fly around Saturn here, you can see how that might happen. So the next one is coming up um, in like, a, oh, I don't remember what year, I think 2025, but it's not, Saturn's not gonna be in a good place for us to see it very well then. But yeah, if we try to fly through this, you can see if we get at just the right angle, they look like they disappear because they're so thin. These rings are about the size of a football field thick. So think about that compared to the size of Saturn, because Saturn is just a little bit smaller, smaller than Jupiter. So how big do you think Jupiter or Saturn is going to be? Oh, Kale wants to tell me that he made a telescope. That's fantastic, Kale. I'd love to see a telescope. Maybe you can send us a picture. All right. Oh, and there's a spacecraft that crashed into Jupiter, right? Uh, it wasn't Jupiter, it was actually Saturn. It was the Cassini spacecraft. Um, so the Cassini spacecraft was a 20 year long mission that studied Saturn and uh, they didn't want it to accidentally land on a moon and potentially contaminate it with Earth-based life. So they crashed it into Saturn and the current mission at Jupiter is Juno and they will do the same thing with that when, that, when its mission is done. All right, we've got a bar eraser, a ball with strings, a small rock, a basketball, a mandarin orange, a small rock, and an orange. These are all really good guesses. An orange. An orange is probably about right. I'm going to show you what I found in my house. I just went around my craft room, clearly, to go get all of this because I found this pin cushion right here, which also includes, by the way, the moon and Mercury in there. But this is my pin cushion and this is about the same size as Saturn. So here is Saturn compared to our sun. And this is just the main part of Saturn. It doesn't include the rings. So the rings would go out just a little bit more as well. Um, oh, Saturn is as big as a juice box. Yeah, if, if we lay a juice box on its side, it might be about the same size as Saturn. Oh, a watermelon. Yeah, maybe a small one, a very small one. Oh, a scoop of ice cream. That would be really good. Someone really wants ice cream. A tomato. This is basically a tomato, yeah, tomato. These are all really great sizes. All right, so that is Saturn. Oh, next up is also mine. Oh, are you doing oh, it? Who's doing yeah, it? Yeah, I'm doing it, there you go. Okay. <laughs> so the next planet is Uranus and it is the only planet to be named after Greek mythology rather than Roman mythology. It was also the last planet, or sorry, the first planet to be discovered by telescope. So every other planet we were able to see with our own eyes, with our eyeballs, and look at it and like, no, yeah, that's a planet. So this one wasn't discovered until a lot later by some British astronomer who looked at it with a telescope and said, hey, that thing's kind of weird. Um, so that's also like why they wanted to keep the naming scheme within the idea of mythology, but I think they broke from Roman mythology for the first time because they discovered it so late. Um, it is actually the coldest planet. Um, it has its own ring system and it is not a gaseous planet. It is mostly ice and rock. Um, so it's an ice giant, I believe it's called. And it has this really complex cloud system. But the thing I think is most interesting about it is that it's tilted. Um, so the way that something I read explained it well said that the poles are where the equator would be and the equator is where the poles are. So because of that weird tilt, um, it has an asymmetric magnetic field. So it's the only planet to have that, which I thought was really neat and cool. Um, so does anyone have any guesses for a good size for it? Do we think it's going to be really small or like close to Jupiter? What do you think? We have um, a quarter. Any other guesses? Small bean. All right. 
and go to our guess. Oh, Uranus is an ice giant and Saturn and Jupiter are gas giants. Ooh, an Easter egg, a golf ball, a ping pong ball, a great bell. <laughs> so it's definitely not oh. as small as the terrestrial planets, but it's not as big as the gas giant either. So, oh. Someone used the paper. So on the event page, we posted a, a something you can print up to, to try to check these in your house. And someone found an ice cube, the uh, usable ice cube that's about the same size. So that's fantastic. Ice cube is perfect. A half dollar, a marble, a golf ball, a mushroom. A mushroom's pretty good. I, I like mushrooms. A plum, a cap for lotion, as the end of a spoon, a clementine, a donut, a cotton ball. Cotton ball is really close too. Yeah. Yeah, these are all great. Yep. <laughs> Fantastic, everybody. So here's how it compares to Jupiter, more or less. All right, so let's, oh, that's not what I wanted. Let's head out to our last planet, which is Neptune. So Neptune is very similar to Uranus. Um, they're both this bluish color. The blue comes from methane in their atmosphere. So uh, methane absorbs most of the wavelengths of light except for the blue and it reflects the blue back. So, uh, and Neptune was actually discovered um, before we could actually observe it with a telescope. So it was the next uh, uh, planet that was observed with a telescope about a hundred years or so after Uranus. Uh, but the way that they, they thought it was there was that they were studying Uranus and they noticed it had some weird perturbations or wobbles in its orbit that could only really be explained if there was another planet at where we eventually found Neptune. So Neptune was in a way discovered by math before it was discovered by a telescope. Um, and so and that's actually kind of what's going on right now. If anyone's heard of Planet Nine, there's uh, people have been studying these orbits of these outer solar system objects um, called Sedna-like objects. And they have like a really weird orbit that seems to be only explained if there's another planet way out in the solar system. We haven't found it yet and we, can, we haven't confirmed it in any way, but people are looking for it. So we'll see if that happens. Um, but we've got Neptune here. Um, what's also really cool about Neptune is I'm gonna go fly out to the solar system again. Um, so here's Pluto. No, wrong way, wrong way. There we go. Here's Pluto and here's Neptune over here. Um, there, if we if we look at this just right, we can actually see that Pluto for a little while goes inside Neptune's orbit a little bit. So for there's a period of time that lasts about 20 or 30 years where Neptune's actually farther from the sun than Pluto is. So this is happening back when I was in elementary school and now uh, Neptune's back to being closer. But they have this weird point where they, they cross. They don't actually hit one another because Pluto's orbit is tilted uh, compared to Neptune's, but where they are relative to one another in terms of how far they are. So how, Neptune and Uranus are very similar. So how big do you think Neptune is gonna be? We've got ping pong ball, a Yoshi egg, the center of a daisy, a half dollar, a tennis ball, a Timbit, a small orange. Now I really want Timbits. You guys are making me hungry. Ooh, they found a rock that's the size of the Neptune on the scale or a quarter. So someone earlier said a lotion cap and I didn't find lotion, but I found this paint container and the end, the bottom part of the paint container is about the same size here as Neptune. So here's Neptune. I'm going to stop my share here. Here's Neptune compared to the sun. Oh, an egg yolk. Yeah, that's a pretty similar one. Oh, a pepperoni. Oh, someone said my very educated mother just served us nothing. I want my nine pizzas. I prefer my very educated mother just served us nachos because nachos are delicious. Um, ooh, a blueberry. All right. So that's the size scale, but let's talk a little bit about the distance. Ooh, a Barbie head. That's pretty good too. 
Um, so I'm going to go back here and we're going to talk about distance because the solar system is also really spread out. I told you that space is made out of space. So here, let's go to the inner solar system down here. So here's the sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars are all relatively close to one another. Um, I'm going to put in the comments here in just a minute uh, a whole fact sheet that will let you actually take all of your items. If you want to go on a really long walk, you can take all of your items with you and then put them at the right distances from the sun. The thing is, as you get in the inner solar system, they'll be pretty close. You can probably start at your house and have them all within a block or so. But once you start getting out to Jupiter, because see here's Mars, look how far out we have to go to find Jupiter. There's Jupiter. We keep going. Look, the entire inner solar system can fit between Mars and Jupiter here. And if we keep going, there's Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Each planet is about twice as far from the sun as the previous planet. Oh, what about Pluto? Pluto is about the same size as Mercury, a little, or about the same size as our moon. Um, so it would be, Pluto would be about the size of this very small pinhead again, the smaller pin, maybe a little. Pluto is very, very small. We do love Pluto. Um, so, but the distances here, the inner solar system is really quite compact, but the outer solar system is very spread out. Now, if I know we have a lot of people here are not in the Lansing area, but if you are in the Lansing area, we actually have something that you can do that's already made for you. We have our solar system walk. So if you start at the Riverside entrance of Impression 5, there is a model of the solar of the of the sun uh, on the side that's about the same size as uh, Kristen's exercise ball. Um, OK, you can make something for Papa. Um, and then down the Lansing River Trail has the solar system to the same scale that we just made and the ray distance scale. You have to get out to Potter Park Zoo to get to Pluto. And if you keep going, you can go all the way out to Eris, which is this minor uh, dwarf planet out here beyond Pluto, which is all the way out at the planetarium. So if you want to get a really good walk in outside, um, keeping your six feet away from everyone, you can go ahead and, and do that Lansing River Trail walk. And that would be really awesome. All right. Hey, Shannon, so, I wanted to say yeah. something about Neptune really quick. Oh, yeah. So my favorite mathematician was behind its discovery, Leonard Euler. He's like the best and like most foundational mathematician ever. And so he was studying uh, Uranus's orbit and noticed it was peculiar. And so the math that he did actually led to Neptune's discovery. Um, so he's awesome. That's awesome. Hi, this is my daughter Veda. She is now joining us. She's joined us on a lot of our, our experiment alongs. All right. So if you guys go find out, I'm going to go post in all of these comments some of the different things that we've used. Um, so this is a, a handout. There we go. Hold on. I lost it. Um, can you wait? I'm still busy with work. Um, so this is a handout I just posted in the comments that has all of these sizes. So if you want to go ahead and do that along with the distances. I'm going to also um, put on here or maybe Kristen can. Here, I'll just do it. The solarsystem.nasa.gov is where we were looking at the solar system today. So this is completely free and a fun place to go explore the solar system if you'd like to check that out. And I think those are some of the resources that we use today. Uh, again, we'll be back in two weeks with volcanoes. And if you have any questions, you can go ahead and put them in the comments. Okay, so go ahead and put any questions you might have in the comments. Otherwise, uh, come back. And if you go find all of these objects, please do post pictures of your entire solar system. And uh, we're also going to, um, sorry, I'm getting distracted right now. You're welcome and thanks for coming today. If you'd like to um, also donate to the planetarium at all, um, I'll put a donation link up as well. Um, all of these programs are completely free, but if you if you have the means to do so and like to help us out during this time, we would certainly appreciate it. Um, 
Otherwise, we'll just wait for some questions. And um, if you go to the event page, that's what I wanted to say. Kristen made this lovely graphic that if you print it up on an eight and a half by 11 standard piece of paper, it will give you roughly the right scale for all of these objects. So you can just go find objects and, and line them up against it. Uh, so if you want to go check those out. All right. Can we post the website for the river trail walk? Um, yeah, let me go see if I can find that. So you just, you start at uh, impression five and you'll see all the inner solar plant, solar system planets from there. Um, and then you keep going and, and you get to Pluto at Potter Park Zoo. But I will go post the link here from lansing.org. Here is the link for our planet walk. And a lot of cities, so if you are not in the area, might have their own planet walk. So go check that out too. See if any if there is anything. A lot of uh, places do make their own. So, and if you are not local, do consider donating to your local planetariums and museums as well, um, if you can. All right. Bye, Langston. Thanks for coming. All right. All right, well, I'm not seeing any questions right now. Thank you all so much for coming and you guys have a great day and uh, we'll see you again um, in a couple of weeks. If you, oh, and I'll let you know about a few other things this week. So tomorrow night at 7 p.m. we are doing our first planetarium at home. So we're gonna do a planetarium show using planetarium software. It's all virtual like this. We're gonna have a star talk as well as information on telescopes if you are interested in buying one. Um, some good buying guide tips for that. Um, and then we have our celestial story time on Tuesday and Thursday at 10 a.m. Uh, we have the next part of our meteorite series on collecting meteorites Wednesday at 10 and Thursday night at 7. Uh, we're doing a joint program about astronomy in Chile uh, with the Emil Bueller Planetarium at Seminole State College in Florida and uh, the Ward Beecher Planetarium at Youngstown State. University. So that'll be a joint program. So go, come check all of those things out as well. All right. See you guys later and thanks for coming. Oh, how big is the Milky Way? We have a question. I say we're, I say bye like five times and then I'm like, oh, there's a question. Um, the Milky Way is very big. I wonder if I can zoom out. Can we zoom out to the Milky Way? So the Milky Way is about a hundred thousand light years across. Is that about right, Kristen? Yeah, for just the part that's all bright. So that means if we take the whole Milky Way, it takes light a hundred thousand years to travel from one end to the other. And it goes 186,000 miles per second. And so that's how big the Milky Way is. It's pretty big. Um, just to put things in comparison, so, the Earth is one astronomical unit from the sun. So we came up with this new unit called astronomical unit because miles is not great for space. And so there's like a definitely de definition of one AU in miles, but um, so just, you know, remember like one AU is the distance from the Earth to the sun. So the end to end of the bright part of the Milky Way in AU, you ready for this number? It is six times 10 to the nine which is... here I'll write it on my board yeah that's good <laughs> that's six with nine zeros after it so that's six billion billion compared to one au so that's how many times bigger than the earth distance from earth to the sun and also for comparison the sunlight takes eight minutes to get from the sun to the earth. Because we're, there we go. I found the Milky Way. There we go. 100,000 light years, whereas it takes the sun eight minutes to get from the sun to the earth. Hooray, the Milky Way. That's a really good, nice picture of the Milky Way. This is also an artist's rendition of what the Milky Way would look like. We've never sent spacecraft out this far to take an actual picture of the Milky Way.
So what's uh, the farthest we've got into the Milky Way? What spacecraft have we sent the farthest? The farthest would be the Voyager. And the farthest we have sent that spacecraft. Hold on. Let me go back in. We also have a question about what time. Celestial story time is at 10 a.m. and the planetarium at home will be at 7 p.m. tomorrow. How big is a black hole? Um, a black hole can be any size, really. It's a matter of how dense it is. So, um, so most black holes, though, um, are, I mean, they're probably about the size of the Earth, but they're the mass of something much bigger. You should answer this, Kristen. You're the black hole. I was going to say it depends on the black hole. Yeah, it depends on the black hole. So here's Voyager, by the way. Here's the sun. This is the farthest we have actually sent a spacecraft. And that's in the Oort cloud now, right? Or thereabouts? Yeah, thereabouts. It's not even there, honestly. Oh, that's kind of so sad. This is the sun. Here is, this is where Pluto is roughly. And this is where Voyager is. And, and we, we sent, sent that out 50 years ago. <laughs> All right. So yeah. But black holes can be also the size of our solar system but like millions of to billions times the mass of our sun. Well, so the interesting thing about like talking about the size of the black hole is that for a black hole, that's a weird concept because um, usually things with size like planets have a surface. One of the features of a black hole is that it doesn't have a surface. Um, but I guess one way to think about that is the Schwarzschild radius. So the Schwarzschild radius is the distance you can be from the center of the black hole without getting sucked into it. Um, and that scale, that does scale with the mass. So the larger the mass, the larger the Schwarzschild shield radius um, is. There's one way to think about it. So the other kind of weird and mysterious objects. Oh, Voyager 1 is going to have no battering in 10 years or so. Is that true? Yeah, it's going to have to run out of power eventually. I don't, I don't know the lifespan, but that's probably around there. They've been really good like, with a lot of um, space telescopes at um, keeping them functional way longer than they were projected to. Like Chander X-ray telescope just passed 20 years last year, which is pretty amazing. All right. Well, I think we're going to head out. If you have more questions, you can put them in the comments. We do get all the notifications and we will come back and answer them. Um, and we will see you soon. I have posted in the comments as well a link to our events. So if you want to check out any of those, um, you can see what else we've got coming up. All right. We'll see you guys later. Thanks so much.